Hello witches! Welcome back for more Vlogtober. I was unsure if I was going to post today because it is a Wednesday and I do have the podcast that goes up on Wednesdays, but I decided that I would just go ahead and do it. I have a bunch of stuff going on today uh, as far as recordings go and recording with other people for their channels, for my podcast. So I was already ready for the day and I was like, you know what? and do a video for today. So I am filming this in the morning and hopefully it's going to be up after the podcast. So this afternoon sometime, fingers crossed. But I wanted to chat today about broom closet witchcraft. Before I do, I wanted to mention that we are just calling this my filming shirt from now on because that is what I looked like in the first of October video and I filmed that on the weekend. It is a totally different day. Like I said, it is Wednesday, but I am in the same shirt and that is because, I mean, it's kind of witchy. It is from Fiction Bath Co. And it is like the Salem, like witchy shirt. And I just love the way that it looks, but it is also the most comfortable shirt that I own. It is so soft. And every other like t-shirt that I own, which is what I would like prefer to film in, it's just easier to throw a t-shirt on, is Chicago Fire Department because it's just that's what happens when you know somebody that like works in the fire department there's so many t-shirts around all the time so I practically live in those <laughs> and I would just rather have something else on for videos and this one is perfect but I am gonna have to get like another one of these t-shirts from them in a different print or like color or something because I am just gonna be in this one in like every single video. So broom closet witchcraft. I wanted to talk about that because I briefly mentioned it in the intro video. So if you watched Vlogtober day one, I went decor hunting for Halloween. And I mentioned that this is a great time to get decor in general for witchy related things, especially if you are in the broom closet. And the reason for that is because there are so many witchy items out. And if you are in the broom closet, the, you may live someplace that doesn't have a lot of witchcraft store options around you. And it might be hard to find the supplies or anything, you know, that is in theme. It might be hard to find besoms or cauldrons, things with pentagrams on them at any other time of year. Whereas now they might be stocked in traditional stores that are easy for you to access, like Target, Spirit Halloween, Walmart. And obviously those options are not just for broom, broom closet witches, but it is really helpful for them. So I wanted to get into that topic today a little bit about what that term means and then some tips for if you are in the broom closet and want to stay there. So broom closet is a very common term and that just means that you are not letting people in your life know that you are a witch. And that could be everybody. Nobody knows that you are practicing witchcraft or paganism, or it could just be certain people. Maybe you're not telling people at work. Maybe you're not telling your immediate family, but your friends know. There's a whole spectrum of being in the broom closet. And it could also just mean that you share some aspects of your practice and not others. A lot of people don't tell people in their life that they are a witch because of the negative connotations with it, but you may also just prefer to keep things private. So even if you aren't scared of the reaction, maybe you are just a private person and nobody needs to know those things. That is something that I am personally familiar with when it comes to the workplace. Religion is just not something that's discussed at work. I kind of know my coworkers' religion based on what holidays they take off. Um, so if they are off on Christmas and going to church, kind of gives me an idea. If they are instead taking off on Yom Kippur, Passover, then I also know what sort of religion they are. A little bit harder to tell with witches and pagans. But again, that is just something that I've guessed based on the holidays, not necessarily that we've talked about it because religion just doesn't need to be brought up in the workplace. So if you are not comfortable telling people, you absolutely don't have to. I know in the age of social media, it seems like everybody is sharing every aspect of their practice and you might want to too. But in case you don't, I have some tips for you. And mostly that comes down to choosing practices and tools that are covert. There are certain tools that are just going to be very obvious that are related to witchcraft, especially if you are trying to keep that from people that you live with. It's likely that you are doing that because they have negative connotations about it. And those negative connotations are going to be surrounding pentagrams, pentacle symbols, maybe incense, 
the triple moon, maybe pillar candles. There are a lot of obvious signs. And of course, if you have witchcraft books lying around, those are going to be much more obvious symbols of witchcraft as opposed to some of the other ideas that I'm going to share. First, I cannot recommend online resources enough. There are so many books that are available solely online through your library. You can get ebook copies. And nowadays there are a lot more resources online in general than there were when I started practicing. And they are a lot more helpful and accurate than they were back then. So there are a lot of ways to check your sources and just find different podcasts. If you're here, you probably are familiar with witchy podcasts, YouTube channels, websites. It'd be a little bit wary of what you are watching on TikTok or Instagram because that short form content kind of makes it hard to give all of the details that are really needed, but it's a good place to get ideas, inspiration, and being online is a great space for you to keep your grimoire as well. Because if you are keeping a journal out where somebody might see it and flip through it and it's got all of your spells in there, that will be a dead giveaway. And I do recommend recording your progress and your journey in some way so you can look back on it. I have a whole video on starting a new grimoire, but you can do that digitally. Like I've mentioned, I have a Notion template that's available over on Patreon, so you can do your entire grimoire online and that is password protected. And you can do the same thing just in Google Docs or your preferred method where you can password protect it so other people can't access your digital grimoire. And I talked specifically about books and going to the library and using the online resources and ebooks, but you can also do some witchy things with books that are not directly called witchcraft, but would be witchy adjacent. And that totally depends on your practice and what you like to do. But plant magic and herbs are a big one, as well as just herbal remedies and homeopathic care. There are a lot of books on that that don't say the word witch at all. And they're very, very common to look up if you are interested in green witchcraft, just growing plants, having indoor plants, taking care of plants outside in your garden, harvesting, using the herbs, making your own herbal blends and teas for your homeopathic care. A lot of those books exist that don't say which in the title and would be perfectly safe to have around in your environment if somebody is checking in on what you're reading. If you are a crystal fan, which I am, that is becoming much more mainstream and you can find so many jewelry pieces that have crystals in them. And the people around you don't necessarily need to know what they are, but since birthstone jewelry is so common, it's not strange at all to have various gemstones within your jewelry and they can be very small pieces. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be a giant chunk of amethyst to be effective. It can just be a tiny piece in a necklace or a ring. And that way you're still able to work with that gemstone energy. There are a lot of pieces as well that are made into home decor, either just to look pretty or they have bookends that are made out of crystals and you don't have to tell anybody that you're working with the energy of those crystals. You're just placing them around for decoration, which has become very common lately. You can also use color magic without anyone being the wiser and that can be in your clothes, your makeup, your nail polish. We often think of it in terms of candle color and you know lighting a blue candle for health or calming and a yellow candle for happiness or we have those same associations with crystals in those colors but that does not have to be your only option. You can absolutely use it in the clothes that you wear to evoke the energy of that color in your day. You can use it in your eyeshadow color, your lipstick color as a form of glamour magic. You can paint your nails in that color as well. And speaking of nails and nail polish, that is a great segue into my next point, which is hidden sigils. You can make a sigil for absolutely anything for protection, abundance, to attract love. And they can be as simple or elaborate as you want. You are making them. There are tons of different ways to make sigils. There are even generators online that will make it for you. And you can use your nail polish to draw the symbol on your nails and then paint it over. So nobody would see the sigil, but you know that it is underneath that top coat of nail polish. You could also sew sigils into your clothes if you have that skill. I do not, but I can just as easily take a Sharpie to any tags on my clothes and draw the sigil that way. I have also been known to draw it on the bottom of my shoes. That is a great way to keep them hidden and on you all day. I also draw them on my body in the shower just with water, with my soap. I have done that with my 
skincare, so drying it on with moisturizer and then rubbing it in to activate the sigil and keep it hidden. Nobody knows that it was there. And I often include sigils in my food. So when I am cooking something, if I'm stirring, I will stir the pattern of the sigil. If I'm baking something, I will often carve it into the bottom layer. So like a bottom of a pie crust or pour down some brownie batter, carve a sigil, pour another layer on top. So nobody is seeing that, especially once it's cut into, they really don't know that a sigil was there, but I know it was, and I put the magic into it through that sigil. I talked about sigils when it comes to skincare and in the shower, but there are a lot of options that you can do with Glamour Magic. You can enchant your makeup and skincare before you even put it on your face. I will have that coming up. I think that's gonna be tomorrow's video is showing you enchanting my makeup collection. And then when I put it on, I will send my energy into that to make my specific intention for the day for my eyeshadow or eyeliner before I even draw it on. And just like with any other form of magic for glamour magic, you can do anything that you like. So you can make your foundation or concealer a layer of protection. You can enchant your lipstick for love or better communication. Endless possibilities. Another great broom closet magic tip is to use not magic. So you often see that in witches ladders where you are braiding something and then you not a particular item, braid a little more, not another item. They're often bells or feathers and those often serve as a form of protection, but you can do any sort of braid. So as you are making that braid and then tying it off at the end, you are putting your spell into that braid. I will often do this with my hair, obviously not today, but a lot of times when I'm going out, I will braid my hair, secure it at the end, and as I am tying that, it is a form of protection, and then when I am taking it out at the end of the day, that is releasing that. You can also do it with the knots on your shoes, tying a ribbon or bow in your hair, tying a scarf, knotting a scarf to your purse. A lot of the options to include knots in your day. And lastly, if you do have access to the internet and nobody is watching too much what you do, especially over your text messages, I love tech and emoji spells. You can absolutely write a spell in emojis. I have a whole instruction for that over on Patreon, but you can just pick out what symbols you like and bookend it with maybe the stars or the crystal balls. And that is your sign that what is in there is a spell and you can email that to yourself you can text it to yourself and that is you putting that spell out in it to the universe to manifest and nobody will know what that means except for you those are my broom closet tips just a couple of ideas i usually have plenty more on here on the podcast on patreon just because that's kind of how my magic is. It is a little low key. I like to do simple things. And for the most part, nobody can actually tell that they're witchcraft until I say that they are or share them on here. But for people who would just come visit my house or see me day to day, they have no idea um, about all of the witchcraft or magic that I did in the morning, let's say with my clothes or my hair or anything. They have no clue. So you can be a full-fledged witch without having to share your practice or make it obvious to a single other person in your life if you don't want to. So those are all my tips. I hope that was helpful. Happy Vlogtober day four. And I will see you tomorrow and I will share the enchanting of my makeup tomorrow. See you then.